Sure, head and neck cancer is really any cancer uh, that exists above the collarbones and outside of the dura, the tough lining around the brain and spinal cord. Really, all those tumors constitute head and neck cancers. For the most part, though, those are cancers of either the skin or the lining of the mouth and throat and nose. And uh, they're really quite a diverse group of cancers. They can be caused by a number of different things, including uh, tobacco exposure, exposure to viruses like HPV or Epstein-Barr virus. And sometimes we're not sure why they get caused, uh, and, uh, but we still deal with them. But they can occur in a lot of different organ sites or inside the mouth and throat. So they have a lot of different ways that we treat them. And a lot of different types of patients get these cancers. It's about the seventh most can common cancer now um, in the United States um, when you include thyroid cancers and salivary gl gland cancers as well. And so it's actually fairly common. Sure, it affects both men and women. There are certainly some types where men are more commonly affected and other types, uh, for example, uh, HPV positive or pharynx cancer is most commonly occurs in men. And thyroid cancer occurs more commonly in women. And this can occur really, uh, the cancers we treat occur everything from children, albeit rarely, but we do see children with head and neck cancers, all the way up to very elderly patients with head and neck cancers. So it's a very diverse population. Uh, with a lot of different types of people who are affected by this disease. Therapy, uh, so we, we really are, our treatments are changing really uh, every, uh, every year or so we have uh, significant advances. So there are a couple uh, key advances in head and neck cancer treatment that I've actually already mentioned. One is that um, we treat surgically using techniques through the mouth that um, are able to preserve patients' functions. So uh, transoral robotic surgery for oropharynx cancers and cancers of the basin tongue of t and tonsil. Also for skull-based tumors, we can access patients and remove their tumors through their nose or through other natural openings. This not only allows for better cosmetic result, but often results in better functional results and actually in some cases even better cures for our patients. So that's very exciting from a surgical point of view. From the point of radiation oncology, we now offer proton therapy through our center, as well as other techniques to improve radiation outcomes and decrease complications or side effects associated with radiation. And UCSD really is, uh, is, a, is a true leader in terms of offering cutting-edge uh, systemic therapy, including immunotherapy or uh, therapy based on patients' mutations and molecular characteristics of their tumors. And I think what we do particularly well is combine these therapies together so that patients can access cutting-edge care that's conventional that we offer just as part of our natural daily standard of care, but also clinical trials as well. So that's really why it's very, very exciting to really work in this field right now. It's really an extraordinary time for us. We're doing better and better with head and neck cancers. We're, getting, uh, we're curing people more often, and we're uh, getting them back to a normal life more quickly and at, at a much better rate and with higher quality of life. So it's really, it's a, it's, it's a great time to be optimistic about the treatment of this cancer. And For cancers in the head and neck that are related to human papillomavirus or HPV, we now recognize that the, really the risk of getting this is um, sexual contact. It's now very clear that the number of sexual contacts, especially the number of oral sexual contacts, increases your risk for HPV-related head and neck cancer, and that is the major risk factor for this disease. We have to also realize that that contact for most individuals occurred decades ago. So these are uh, people who came in contact with the virus probably in their 20s or 30s who then develop cancers in their 40s or 50s. We do recommend that uh, patients see their dentist on a regular basis, and your dentist should be doing a thorough oral cavity exam, and that is probably the best screening test that we have for cancers of the head and neck. With respect to prevention of head and neck cancer, the most obvious thing is not to smoke. Still, the biggest risk factor for cancers of the head and neck is tobacco, and the best way to avoid it is to not smoke, and if you are smoking, to stop smoking. Other preventative measures really are still being explored. Um, certainly, eating a diet rich in 
um, fruits and vegetables seems to be a positive factor. Uh, keeping, maintaining a good oral hygiene also uh, seems to be a factor that can prevent uh, uh, cancers of the head and neck. Having said that, really the best way to prevent an HPV-related head and neck cancer, and in fact an HPV-related uh, cancer of any kind, is to get vaccinated against the HPV virus. These vaccines cover the carcinogenic strains of the virus, that is, the types of the virus that cause cancer. For head and neck, it's usually type 16. Almost all the cases are type 16. But the other strains, type 18, type 31, type 33, can also cause cancer. And the vaccines available today can prevent those infections. Now, let's just step back a second and realize what we're talking about. We're talking about a vaccine that can prevent the infection if somebody is exposed to it. So in order to do that, the vaccine has to be given prior to exposure to the virus. Remembering that HPV is a sexually transmitted virus, really the best time to immunize then is prior to first sexual contact. And that usually means uh, girls and boys in th their preteen years before they've uh, become sexually active. So the current CDC recommendation is to vaccinate both girls and boys with the HPV vaccine to prevent not only HPV-related diseases, but most importantly, HPV-related cancer.